Welcome to the Total Party Kill podcast, in which a group of friends play Dungeons and Dragons on the internet for your amusement. This is episode number 133, posted March 2018. Got kank milk? I'll just watch over these losers while they sleep. Okay, I just basically need to know if you were going to go explore while everyone is asleep or not, and you are not. So, eight hours pass uneventfully. It uh, is now we miss rehearsal, huh? You well, it's it's we'll say it's ten thirty ish a.m. So, do they still serve brunch in this underground dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's you can get there stew. early if you want. So Only the on line weekends. is is uh-huh. murder, literally. <laughs> Erica. There are no weekends on Athos. <gasps> ah, it truly is the worst. Ah, you are awake, everybody's rested, you have your hit points back, you don't have a level of exhaustion anymore, you have spells, if you have spells, they're redone, you can select new ones, if that's a thing that you do. There you go. The, uh... So okay. should we explore, or should we go back to the practice chamber? We Wait. explore. Alright, let's do it. Mm-hmm. I want to see what's outside this door here. Yeah, if we run into Wind Harrow, we'll just tell them we got lost. Yep. We didn't have a map. All right, so where, which door did you... Uh, oh, that door. Okay. This one, yep. I will reveal the, street, the so area. Speak. It is into the street. So to speak. Mm-hmm. So to speak. All right. So which way do we want to, to head? You have many options. I think we... Go, oh, if we go back to that original room, that's not the cafeteria, though, right? Practice was in the cafeteria. Practice was in the, it was just a, a plaza. In the, the plaza of the muses. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like the looks I was of this say... northbound passage to the east of us here. It's nice and wide, and it seems like it leads to more interesting things. Yeah, I mean, if they, have, if they have that half, halfling stashed someplace, it's probably not on the outskirts of town. Like, I would assume it would be someplace fortified. Just a guess. Uh, all right, so you're going up this hallway. Uh, that reveals it's more of a street than hallway. Uh, Erica was correct. That reveals another street and uh, a way up here. Hmm. All right. I want to listen at this door. Uh, okay. Give me a listen check or perception check, really. Mm-hmm. Seven. You hear nothing. Okay. I shrug. Okay. Do we want to like check out buildings as we go? I would think so. Pop that door. I'm all tried listening at the same door. He got a fourteen. Uh he heard nothing. He agrees with with Chris's assessment. (laughs) I'm really good at easing doors open. It's an empty room. <gasps> it's room 14. Wait. Oh, my God. 14. Deja right. vu. Yeah, you, you realize. All over again. I've gone nowhere. We're in the residential sector here. Yep. That's mm-hmm. right. It's lovely, except not really. All right. Let's continue um, to the north. Yeah. They're more or less intact. Uh, you continue to the north. You see the street turns to the west. All right. Peek around the corner. You build see... this crazy city. Dwarves. Uh, you see the uh, a wall and a door. Oh, I see what's, blue what's cobblestone blue here. Do, yeah, and that is water. Runs to the blue. <laughs> Ooh, what is it? Yeah, because water. <laughs> That's exciting. Wait, wait! Somebody uh, hold Regdar by the collar or something. Okay, this so, one's probably not full of lobsters. <laughs> I'm going to sadly reveal this part. Is there another pool of drawn butter somewhere nearby? Ooh. All right, let me explain what you see. Cracked flagstones of ultramarine marble pave this plaza. Ah. An avenue to the east... Uh, what? An avenue to the east ends at a wall of fallen masonry and stone. To the west, a pillared colonnade stretches across a moat to a steep pyramid. You actually cannot see that, but I assume mm. if you go in, you'll see these things. I want to listen at this door to the south here. Preston, you're a bit uh, of a busybody. You hear the sound of yep. 14. Uh, all right, so. You hear nothing. Room 14. All right. I'm going to try to stealthily 
ease, ease it open and just peek in. All right. I'm guessing it's another house, but we'll see. It is another empty house. This is so okay. very RPG where we just like run to everybody's houses and take all their stuff, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing to yeah. take. What's, what's the houses drawers? are all empty. This, Guys, let's, uh, let's dig up their yard for gems. Just taking their rubble. <laughs> And as you as you are uh, looking around, you hear um, from that uh, ultramarine flagstone plaza uh, some sound of uh, stonework happening. Hmm. Interesting. All right, but we don't hear screaming anymore. You do not Still hear no screaming? any screaming. Okay. Well, as always, I am keeping an eye on Carlos. Because that is my role that's in this good, party that's now. That's good. That's mm-hmm. good. You should do that. <clears throat> hey, maybe the flute playing was generating the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's but remember, stuff. it stopped and the screaming mm-hmm. didn't. That's true. Uh, oh, you're going in here. Okay, so uh, I will unveil here. So at this, there is uh, a, a genie, uh, a what? djinn here, and he is uh, in a torn vest and ragged pantaloons. Uh, and he is... Uh, just carving a boulder with some stone with with uh, stone carving tools. Just staring at it. Cool, All right, I'm, cool I'm, boulder. I'm... <laughs> don't bug him. <laughs> don't bug him. Like. I'll leave that to you. Oh man! Ah, ah, he's so big. Why? <laughs> just so that you can see what he looks like. He looks like that. It startles I, me every time. I thought he got very angry. <laughs> but he looks good. He looks good. It's a very handsome man. Mm-hmm. And he is uh, working some stone. I can go talk to him. Yeah, Shara, talk to go him. Go ahead. Right, uh, the cool boulder was a great opening line, but that's fine. That's cool. That's right. It says, uh, <laughs> initiates, you, you, are you lost? Yes. Probably. Uh, constantly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My default state, really. We're due to torture a prisoner with our terrible music, but we cannot find where they're keeping him. Well, luckily, uh, Arasi doesn't hasn't commanded me to help you people, so find it yourself. Do you do everything she tells you? I have to do everything she tells me. Why? She has Why? my bottle. Oh. Horn. Actually, mm. she has my horn. No bottle. <laughs> That's a stereotype. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very confused. Uh, also, so you, so uh, once you walk in here, I should explain uh, what you see. So you see this uh, uh, stone colony that spans most uh, spans a moat. So there's a uh, there's a moat here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that wow. is. Uh, <laughs> they are oh. stone pillars lined the way like enormous trees enga- enga- engraved, not engaged, with the names and likenesses of notable dwarves of the past. Hmm. Broken pieces of wood and stone litter the floor. And the colonnade ends at a walkway enclosing a step pyramid to the west. Perched atop the pyramid is a large draconic creature with a humanoid rider. The rider wears a feathered cloak. Ah, I believe we have found the fabled colonnade of notable dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, but uh, the the genie <laughs> ignores you and continues carving this rock. All right. So, so I say to the to the genie. Um, so, if you had your horn back, you wouldn't have to do everything she says. Uh no, I would. I would be freed from this task, and I could go back to my plane. Your my plane, plane of existence, not my you airplane. Get us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we ain't putting you on no plane. <laughs> I don't get this reference because I'm a genie. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay if we call you Mr. G? No. <laughs> My name is Achahir. Mr. G? <laughs> get us out of here. <laughs> Achahir? Achahir? Something like that. Well, uh, what if what if we were to... I suspect it's Mr. D anyway. Uh, what if we were to keep an eye out for that horn and maybe steal it back for you? Would you help us uh, get around then? Uh, I, If you could destroy the horn... Oh, destroy uh, it? That won't I hurt you? Would, it will not hurt me. Uh, that would be good. I will, I will reward you, although I, don't, I must admit, looking at you, 
you are initiates. Carlos is wandering away. Uh, yes. So we should also <laughs> I'm not cover keeping that. my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Press it. Shara, grab it. And I've got Amal. While I, I typically am supposed to, I am seeing one of my, like, Ken enslaved so Car- i'm a little carlos distracted by that is carlos is admiring the famous dwarfs he's noted that it's seven pillars on either side so on the north side he's naming them all seeing if he can test his knowledge of famous dwarfs bashful dopey grumpy happy <laughs> sleepy sneezy and doc mm-hmm. on the other side it's like gimli and <laughs> no and glow that's it yep and Philly, those other Killy, guys Bomber, yeah. biffer yeah so we'll, we'll deal with what happens to Carlos and in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos is murdered for crimes against dwarf history. <laughs> uh, he says, but you're, you're initiates of uh, this stupid cult. I, why would you attack your, your queen? That was kind of an accident. We not so he, much he, initiates. He, he blinks once and says, you people. <laughs> when, he blinks, <laughs> when he blinks, does it make a boing, boing, boing noise? <laughs> it does not. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're actually we're 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 here. Uh, we're genie inspectors, really. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm glad Carlos is far enough away. Not here. Heard Not that. no. He's just he's just like admiring the statue of Sneezy. When Torhild Flametongue summoned me, uh, he he was a man who respected genies. This Arasi is is just no good. What? what? How long have you been here? I've been here for nigh on two millennia. <laughs> My has, on. has the queen been in charge of you that whole time? No, she's recent. She found the horn. Lucky find, I think. And now she's <laughs> commanded me to rebuild this city that my uh, that I built before on rock. What is that? And a dinner roll? What is she want the city for? Uh, I guess she wants it to be a headquarters for her cult. What is what is the aim of this cult? You? Do you think that uh, she's going to tell me that? I just thought you might, you seem like a smart guy. You might have gleaned it. It's a quiz. It's a pop quiz. (laughs) Well, they, they are, uh, they worship, uh, an elemental being called Yansi Bin. And I do believe that they are trying to summon him from the air elemental plane to our plane of existence. Uh, do you know anything about that, that dude? Do I know anything about that dude? Oh yeah, just because he's air related, he's gonna know all of the other air elements. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> you said that. Racist uh, elves. Let me see if I know anything about this man. I must check the adventure. <laughs> I feel like it would be quite an oversight not to ask that question. Yes, so he is an evil elemental. Uh-oh. Uh who is <laughs> the cult of the howling hatred might have tipped you off as to his alignment it could have been poetic license his plots began at the forging of the worlds i i knew that because of the flutes he, he, uh, he generally operates unseen studying his enemies from afar and ambushing them quickly uh he wants to come into this world to take over because he feels like for for a long time Athis, i don't know uh this is the the gd speaking i don't know how familiar you folks are with uh the way that our plane is sealed off from the other planes generally uh but that has been weakening as of late thanks to the work of several cults uh the this cult being one of them and they wish to weaken the 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 seal enough to bring forth uh yansi bin to help them take over I have a lot of concerns about any cult that itself identifies as a cult. That just seems okay. like, like I don't know. Maybe they could work on their self esteem first. Um, well, Tony, yeah, I, I think f- that the word cult has just gotten a bad name in our modern times. There have been oh, many okay. cults that are, are, are in in fun. in Athens. A cult is just a gathering of peoples. Exactly. They're okay. just religious people that uh, like to wear cloaks and want to summon an evil elemental to take over the world. Right. Well, I don't like the sound of that at all. So no, I, I think you never uh, break the seal. Bad idea. Yeah, I think maybe we 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 might want to work from the inside. I'm saying this to the genie. Uh, work oh. from the inside to to stop that. Is there anything that you could tell us that might uh, might help us out? Do you know where they might? I don't know. Keep secret secret documents or prisoners or anything in this joint uh well i they ha- i've been commanded to rebuild the city and i have been and as he's talking i should say he has not stopped carving this stone mm-hmm. uh i cannot stop working on this city so i have not gone anywhere uh but if you could destroy a horn and he, he describes what this horn looks like i will reward you 
Okay. Do you do you know where it is? Is it just with, uh, with the queen, I, or I assume it is with Arasi. Okay. But I do. Okay. I I'm not allowed to leave. I cannot leave. Uh, uh, and while all that's happening, uh, Carlos has wandered away. No one keeping an eye on Carlos <laughs> as usual. We we need to have a backup buddy system here because. <laughs> Sometimes the primary system fails. Yeah. It takes a party. Carlo, yeah, Carlos management is a team <laughs> right. effort. Mm-hmm. Um, I will mention, uh, it is known that there are magics that can be used to locate objects. And I believe if he describes the horn in enough detail, which presumably he could do because he's pretty tied to it magically, uh, I might be able to locate said horn um, within the city, uh, within right. a thousand feet. So. Well, you're you're talking to him as that uh, uh, simultaneously. Carlos is wandering up the colonnade of of dwarven heroes, and he sees from the top of the step pyramid a wyvern swooping down uh, and landing in front of him. And uh, the man who is astride the wyvern says, "Stop! What what are you doing here? Identify I, yourself." I am Carlos. I am one of the initiates who is going to play the flute at the ceremony later. And in my downtime, I am looking at uh, looking at statues of dwarves because I really like dwarves. Because uh, my uh, my mom was a dwarf. Uh, you want to make something of it? <laughs> it was going so well. Uh, Eighteen initiates intimidation. Aren't allowed. Eighteen intimidation. You want to make something of it? I'm honoring my mother's people. All right. Well, roll at disadvantage because you're trying to intimidate someone who is astride a large dragon, basically. Uh, Medium. <laughs> and you're an dragon. initiate, as far as he's concerned. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> Investigate this. Investigate the heck out of this. Eighteen, 18 again. again. All right. Well, he is. It was. I was to... tossing off the intimidation at the end. Like Ooh. I'm a little outraged. That come on. I'm admiring the dwarves here. Uh, well, he says, how dare you speak to me like that, initiate? You have no business here. Where, where are you assigned? The, the, the Inside concert? Inside this pyramid. <laughs> I, I did not actually hear Carlos's answer. The concert? Only, uh, <laughs> the concert? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Do you not know about the whole flute do I look like a man who knows things about flutes initiative? It's, prob- it's probably above his level. <laughs> I'm sorry. There is, a, there is a concert today, and we're performing at it, and they gave us a little downtime, and I wanted to see the dwarves. That's all. I'm not... Initiatives do not have downtime. Roll for initiative. <laughs> uh, yes, initiates. I'm very angry, and I, I confuse my words sometimes. Right. Well, w- would you like me to return to where we're supposed to be, worms? or would you like to show me? I would. L- I do not have time to to be a chaperone for an initiate. Get out of here. Oh yes, sir. All right. Okay. Back the way you came, and take those other people with you, and stop bothering that genie. All right. I don't know those people, but we'll we'll, we'll I'll be on my way, sir. <laughs> And then he flies to follow you. <laughs> what? This guy's a jerk. He is a jerk. And he lands into uh, and as the rest of you are talking to the genie, you notice, uh, you feel the ground shake a bit as a wyvern lands, and uh, there is a uh, a human on it, and he says, "You initiates, don't bother that genie. He has work to do. As I assume, so do you. You get Guy on with on it, dragon. You don't bother us." Any chance we could convince this genie that that wyvern is a boulder? <laughs> so, you know, Let's this go. Is, this is, Sorry, uh, sir. <laughs> Carve it. If somebody wants to try to take the guy out, that's fine. But I'm, I just thought I'd lead him back here to all of you. <laughs> I really kind of want choice. to ride the wyvern. But other than that, <laughs> Dan, uh, stop, should talk stop, to the wyvern. Stop marketing your sports drink. Talk ride to the, the wyvern. <laughs> how, how open wyvern. is the is the guy on thing? guy on on your back is jerk wyvern. Come with me, me nicer. Oh, yeah, I can totally talk to that wyvern. That would be amazing. How open is the air around us? Like, if we did get into it with this guy, do we think that the sounds would echo far and there would be backup right away? Uh, well, you know that you are in the occultist headquarters. <laughs> sure. Uh, and that uh, there are cultists all around, and that people would probably cultists come if they heard. Uh, this, Team, this, this feels like a, okay. a battle that we don't have to do. It's true. Yeah, and we so still let's... have things to learn about the city. Yep. So uh, yeah. come on, let's folks. play it cool. Yeah. Head out. And so here in 
on the colonnade and where the the pyramid is, the ceilings are seventy five feet tall. Okay. All right. That's... I grab I grab Carlos's hand and say, "No more playing with colanders for you. Let's go." <laughs> I say, "Yes. Stop <laughs> harassing that genie." To everybody else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And make I sure everybody moves away. Uh, Carlos is apparently running away faster than I'm we just, I thought we were all going. I thought we were all going here. We're going. <laughs> all right, so you, you quickly... I just want to make sure everybody else is moving, too. And uh, you notice the, the man on the wyvern... Amal pets the wyvern on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> and as Amal rounds the corner, because I assume he Pet is the wyvern, going to... it's working. <laughs> he, he, he is uh, at the tail end of the party. You see the, the wyvern uh, well, lift Shara off. Is not oh, well, yet. then Shara will be at the end of the party, and she sees the wyvern lift off and fly back up to the top of the pyramid. Okay. Shaking his head and muttering, ah, initiates these days. <laughs> All right. You can't get good initiates these days. Yeah. That's right. Well, Especially if you he should have heard the other ones play the flute. Yeah. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Uh, all, right. all right, so where would you like to go now? I feel like we should, f- like, look uh, around the corner. It's great that somebody was watching Carlos, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't that great? Mm-hmm. Wasn't that a good move? I did my job. Okay, so, so who's the Carlos backup? So, Scott, does it does does this... Th- Omlal's the Carlos backup, which is really important. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's actually okay, because if I'm watching Omlal, then I will also see Carlos. All it makes Omlal feel very, like... <laughs> Before so, with a, me in charge of watching Carlos Scott with the two bl- the two black lines down there is that is that a passage that goes anywhere or is that the implication that since it goes off the edge of the map that it's nothing interesting? Uh, well, I would not say that that's the implication. The passage does go somewhere. It continues further down, uh, and it's dark, and uh, you cannot see where the end is. All right, I'm almost just gonna peek around this corner, over here, just to okay. see, you know, like what's here. So that is, you recognize this, uh, yep, pretty much <laughs> as, as the street that you got to fill kind in of some walk map down there. Mm-hmm. Um, do we want and, to go down that tunnel for a while and see where it leads, or do we want to continue to check out this area? I mean, I suspect now that I've seen the pyramid and seen how it's guarded, that that's probably where they would be keeping prisoners. So yeah. the other Likely. option would be back here near where we came in. There was it, like another street. It might be smart to go down that tunnel a ways and see if maybe that's an mm-hmm. escape route for future reference. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm 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 all for examining the tunnel. Yeah. Might want to like set a go bag off to the side so <laughs> when we inevitably get chased uh, a, out of a here by a guy bag. riding a wyvern that uh all right, so you continue, you go down this this uh, passageway. Uh, for a couple hundred feet, it looks like it's worked stone, and then it turns into kind of a natural passageway. You continue going for, I'll say, I don't know, 700 feet, and you come upon a crudely built iron gate that looks like a new addition to this ancient dungeon that blocks the passage. A heavy chain and padlock secure the gate. Well, How hard would it be to just bash that the hell off? I could just knock it. Yeah. I that mean, makes lock- a huge sound. Yeah, but we're Locks- a ways down the path, That's- aren't we? Yeah, well, but that would also use a beyond s- it. bell slot, like wouldn't it? If we can I'm just say it, we need to get out of here, I can knock it. Just, you know, locks are really just to keep honest people out, and I've never met one of those people. So, um, Amal, hit it with a rock. Amal hits it with a rock. Uh, give me a strength check. Sure thing. 17. That surely uh, won't make any kind of noise. You make a loud clank noise, and the Hold lock... It. Remains unimpressed wow. and locked. <laughs> this this good lock. <laughs> uh, um, we're we're halfway to claiming that we're lock inspectors. So <laughs> <laughs> we are literally yeah, inspectors. This lock, lock, check out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have thieves tools. Let me look. I feel like this is a discussion we have every third session. Is does anyone have thieves tools? I'd like yeah. to roll Arcana just to see if that's maybe an arcane lock of some kind, which might sure. be why it's resistant to the uh, yeah tender really? ministrations oh. of Amal. Really, really study Ooh. it, lock and veld it. Only I do 12. have thieves tools. It is a regular lock. All right, Amal. Just hey, I'm gonna pick it. Was crappy. All right, oh, it'll get infected. Don't do that. A dexterity check. A dexterity check. Okay, that's how you pick. FYI, it. Steve, the knock spells audible. You add your three. You're proficient feet. with. Thieves tools, you add your proficiency bonus. Uh, That's good info, Dan. It's far away. We're not 300 feet away, are we? Dexterity. I'm saying and for future reference, if we're coming down this path and we need to get the hell out fast, I can knock it open. I'll just save a spell slot. Okay. You can knock it. 
That makes a curiosity. Sense. The, How can I, I mean, the padlock's on this side of the gate, right? Yes. That's a good point. Okay. How can I tell if I'm proficient with thieves' tools? Uh, uh, what would be in your class Whoa. are you? Hi. Oh, crap. I am a rogue. You are proficient with thieves' tools. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I rolled seven, my mod is plus three, and then I get what? Uh, that was wrong, but two, I believe. No, is your three. proficiency bonus? Three. It's there plus you go. Three. So six. Level five. six. Okay. So 13. 13. The lock remains locked. But you and said it was just a normal lock. Why would it? Well, well, normal because, lock because can still you, be difficult. You failed your check. <laughs> All right, I'm you didn't, just one you more didn't fail it, it with that so rock. poorly that your thieves' tools broke, which is good. That's good. All right, uh, I'll I'm got it. a 20 on his second attempt to whack it with a rock. It, it looks as though... It's going to require more than that. It is still it's going to require more than a 20? Mm-hmm. That's a really good lock. It is. Well, it's it a looks giant like... padlock with a huge chain. Yep. Keeping people out. Of it a... is a heavy chain. I... Would it be easier to break the chain? <laughs> <laughs> this is only... So no. can... Never How's that door chain. look? Is that door very secure? What if we take it off its hinges? <laughs> Dan, if you don't know by now, you will never know again. Don't break that can chain. Can I try to pick it again? I mean, Almol got a couple of shots with the... The you rock. can try to pick it again. Okay. I'm just getting more excited for what will inevitably be the letdown That's of worse. what's behind the gate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just enjoying uh, the scene of like the, the hits lock. The rock Shara sneaks him with a lockpick. Amal hits him with a rock. Shara sneaks him with a lockpick. I imagine really that we have to like, we have to like distract Amal between the pick sessions with like <laughs> a knock knock Shara joke. with a rock by accident. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It is still locked. Okay. This lock impossible. Yep. <laughs> cannot cannot open this lock. Very good lock. We should get some of these locks. Well, I think we've at least learned that it's it's clear that this leads out of this city to somewhere, uh, to a place where they're where creatures are possibly. What if I mean? Living? What if this is the dungeon where they've got a bunch of halflings locked up? Well, I guess that's possible. Hmm. I don't know. Seems weird. A locked door invites. I mean, it does. I don't know. Kashka, how are you feeling? You fed up? And you want to use magic? I well, I want to look at the. The gate itself, like, are the hinges weak? Could we just, like, knock the hinges with a, with a rock? It is uh, a crudely built iron gate. <laughs> if it's crudely built, maybe we can just take down the gate itself. It's, ah, uh, yes, crudely built, well installed, yeah. though. That's how they get you, my friend. Mm-hmm. Amal, can That's you true. bend those bars Universal Studios tour style? Just bust yeah. them open. Absolutely. I'm sure I can probably do that. Let's try this. <laughs> 16. Uh, so Umlal uh, shakes himself up, warms his muscles, grabs two bars, pulls with all his might, uh, and he says, I think they move. And everybody looks, and they have not moved at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe they mimic. They'll just get out of the way. This seems... All right. Yeah. Uh, Kachka, uh, me think it we trapped here forever. <laughs> we should embrace our lives as cultists. <laughs> Yep, everybody start playing the flute. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to cast knock on the lock. Yeah, do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you hear a very loud uh, knock reverberate uh, 300 feet both directions. As if the... anyone asks, we heard a weird sound and came running. The we padlock... are 700 feet down the, uh, I, down yes, the t- tunnel. I so. know. The padlock unlocks. Nice. All right. Yes. Uh, uh, oh me, crap! Sorry, that lo- was me. Yeah. I dropped we it. We loosened it. Yep. We Almol. should probably. Thanks, uh, this this padlock's great. We should take it with us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is all the treasure you will find in this adventure. <laughs> One uh, <laughs> sweet padlock. <laughs> Regdar takes the padlock and chain. <laughs> all right. Write down. Uh, Are you like wearing it? Heavy it padlock like and chain. It's like Flava Flav style. You've got like a giant yeah. padlock on your chest. Flava Flav. Totally. All right, let's see. He's setting a new trend on Athos. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody's wearing locks now. It's going to be all the super rage. In. Super in. Well, if it's, he didn't say what it's made of. It's made, if it's made out of metal, it's really valuable. That's a good point. If it's not made out of metal, why was it so hard to break? <laughs> magic. <laughs> but Wait, it's not magic. I did an arcana check. <laughs> magic. It's not magic. Oh, like, Bone. Yes, <laughs> magic. I bone. crushed a flute of bone with my bare hand. <laughs> the magic it's is a, just how well it's that made. Was, that flute was they, made out of like bird petrified. bones, Dan. Very, very light and hollow. <laughs> that that flute was made of human bones, and uh, human it was but so that fragile. <laughs> there's no, there's very few uh, mammals on Athens. That person had a severe calcium deficiency because they had never had milk. Turns <laughs> out, when all you drink is fermented cank juice, your bones are as brittle as 
what really Iron. brittle bones. It's not uh, true. <laughs> the the, the kank, bo- uh, kank milk board of Athos will remind you there's lots of <laughs> calcium in kank milk. <laughs> kank milk does a body good. Got kank milk? <laughs> no, don't believe them. They lie. Drink raw kank milk straight from the source. <laughs> you, need, you need vitamin D, and yeah, people that's... on Athos stay indoors because it's so hot. Mm-hmm. Like, that's you right. can't yeah. absorb calcium without vitamin D. This podcast is sponsored by Kank Milk. Go to kankmilk.com and enter the <laughs> promo code TPK to get 10% off your first order of Kank Milk. Mmm, it's not delicious. I just, <laughs> just clamor, don't go to kankmilk.com. I have some serious synergy. We should be opening our own Kank Milk business. <laughs> kankmilk.com appears to be available. Yeah. <laughs> Someone should buy that and redirect it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so you are now standing in a tunnel with an open, well, an Let's unlocked go. padlock. I say uh, we continue. Does the no, tunnel I'm, continue? I'm bored of this. Let us return. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ragdar. I'm there might be the pottery down there. Oh, I'm back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So you, I assume you open the gate. Uh, you walk down a uh, more of the tunnel when it opens up into a natural cavern. That descends towards a pebble, pebble-covered lake shore. Several rotten wooden skiffs are drawn up on the shore. To the east, a large subterranean lake stretches into the dark distance, and to the west, yeah, we're millionaires, guys. <laughs> passages lead west and north. Light Zippo. And the west one is the one we came down, I assume. Uh correct. Okay. Can we? Can we reach the North Passageway, or would we have to take a skiff to get to the North Passageway? Uh, nope. So the North Passageway, so basically it is uh, kind of a, a, you walk out of your tunnel with the the um, gate that you just came through, and to your north is a, another passageway, and directly in front of you, it slopes down into this subterranean lake where the three wooden uh, skiffs Let's are. Do out. any of the skiffs look seaworthy, or are they all too rotten to, to use? You are too far away from them to know. I would like to approach and find out. Yeah, now Let's we're boat, in- boat inspectors. And together. Uh, okay, so you uh, are approaching slowly, and uh, you mm-hmm. approach and find these wooden boats, and you all realize... Hmm. This is the first time I've ever seen a boat that required that goes on the water. So I don't really know how much about it. Uh, I do know that probably these giant holes and rotted wood. Those are wood good for aerodynamics. <laughs> would probably mean it doesn't float. But uh, there are very few sailors on Athos. So are they floating? Are they? They, on... they are on. So there's like this little pebble kind of uh, area that they are on dry land at the launch point. ramp. Got it. I don't know what that means, but yes. It's where you put boats into the water. Oh, there you go. See, I am not a... Uh... <laughs> I'm from Athens, apparently. I didn't know We that. should, uh, <laughs> should like, know. let's check out the water. How's the water look? Uh, so it looks kind of brackish, uh, hmm. and That's not gonna, Hey, buddy! That's going <laughs> to... <laughs> reference acknowledge uh, that will depreciate its value unfortunately I think right? and so so Regdar you are kind of peering close to the water and just you uh, know within alligator snapping range I figure right you can really really lean in there face yeah. first <laughs> and out uh, from the water alligators oh, do you God. who let Regdar near water yeah I don't know this, this water is probably <laughs> full of mean lobsters Carlos you're supposed the water. to be watching Regdar comes a large purple tentacle that oh. slams onto oh no. He's gonna try uh, to take over the Regdar world. Uh, oh with no. a 23. <laughs> we can't hear you. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So you take, uh, what is that? Eight points of bludgeoning damage. And you are grappled, and uh, this tentacle is slowly drawing you into the water now. Mm. All right, as as Regdar is hit by a tentacle and is taking mm. taking quite a deal of damage and is being dragged underwater, he yells out, "This was unforeseen!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will right. rush rush to um, Regdar's aid as soon nice as I see him. this happen. As will I. All right, I'm, so I'm gonna. This is all Doctor Fred's fault. 
I will admit that I did not think you were going to go this way, so I have not prepared any of this, so bear with me. <laughs> the purple tentacle recedes back into the water. <laughs> That's right. Hooray. No, I just mm. need to find... I don't trust purple tentacle. Take uh, on the world. Excellent. So why don't we roll initiative? Because the octopus had a surprise round, because I don't think anybody was expecting the giant octopus. Ooh. Nobody expects the, <laughs> the giant octopus. Yeah. I mean, what right. do we know about water creatures? So I will set the stage. Uh, I will not uh, show a map because I don't have a map. Uh, there is, uh, so, so you're at the shoreline uh, or lake line, really. Uh, there's a tentacle that is wrapped and currently grappling Regdar, drawing him into the brackish water. Uh, and Carlos, you are, are stunned by this turn of events, but it is your turn first. You are fleet afoot. Oh, and well. I'll say you're, you know, like 15 feet from where uh, Regdar is. Well, it's time to, uh, it. Uh, well, I'm going to run over there and try to okay. hit the tentacle. Go for it. With my, uh, with my Warhammer. Oh, 21. Well, a, tw- a, tw- a 21 will hit a tentacle. 10 damage. Uh, all right. Tentacle is kind of rubbery, so a little bounces off, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Uh, Regdar, you are currently grappled by a giant purple tentacle. All right. Uh, well, Regdar is going to use one of his relatively new third level spells, or, I mean, I guess level three spell. I don't know the exact way to describe it. Uh, Regdar is going to just, you know, think electric thoughts (laughs) and unleash a lightning bolt on, am I targeting the tentacle, or am I close enough to the situation that I am aware of the source of the tentacle? Uh, we roll a perception check. All right. Um, 15. Uh, you do see this, so the tentacle is attached to what can only be described as a gigantic octopus. I will shoot a five-foot beam of electricity at it. <laughs> All right. Is it should in the water attempt and connected to you. That seems bad. No, this also- is all part of the plan. Um, I will also. Regdar has very little knowledge of electricity. It's, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's. Uh, so it needs to make a dexterity saving throw, or it will take eight uh, d d six or d eight. Um, eight d six damage. If it succeeds, it will take half of it. It uh, succeeds. All right. Um, welcome to, uh, 26, half of 26 is 13 damage, Mr. Octopus. All right. The octopus. Uh, can Regdar do a move action to try and get out of the grapple? Uh, you can roll to try and escape. You are restrained. I'm restrained. Is that acrobatics or something else? Acrobatics or just a dexterity save. You also have disadvantage because you're restrained. All right. Well, I will try and get out with acrobatics. Regdar is miserable at this 13 was the lower roll uh you are still grappled by a giant octopus that is unsurprising (laughs) hey guys this is real bad (laughs) umlal you uh you see that your friend is wrapped in a a a giant purple tentacle that seems to be coming from uh something some wet substance and it is would first like to try and convince the octopus that we're tentacle inspectors from tier well, it is an animal, so I can talk to it. No, it takes, ten, it takes ten minutes. It's very slow. It's very slow. Well, nothing else is happening. Uh, I am going to run over and hit it with my greatsword. See how that goes. Okay. Uh, Pretty great. Attack. I'm going to try twice because I get two attacks. Bam. And you're at, well, I will. Oh, man, nice. I get two attacks, too. I forgot all about that. I rolled a 14 and a 9. Uh, well, the 14 will hit. Great. Six, that was the better damage roll. 16. I'm glad we are not doing this when we're exhausted. That would have been real bad. <laughs> <laughs> 16 slashing damage. All right. This this tentacle looks uh, in poor shape. Guys, we may be fighting a giant giant octopus that's about to kill Regdra, but at least we're well rested, and that's what matters. That's right. <laughs> Presta. Is, is that what matters? Uh, <laughs> I will fire a couple of arrows into the, uh, into the tentacle. Okay. If I can. Sure. And that is a 20, not a natural 20. That will hit. hit. All right. 
And somebody already did some damage. Twelve points of piercing damage. All right. And I will try to shoot it again. And that is another 20. Not natural. So this time that it's hits. only uh, six piercing damage. All right. And that final arrow uh, hits the flesh of the tentacle and uh, it convulses and gets pulled back into the water, leaving Regdar uh, pounding for breath uh, on the shores of this lake. I immediately drag Rektar farther away from the edge of the water. <laughs> Thanks! I feel like I should have learned something from this, but I'm unclear what that is. <laughs> I just I shake my head, and is, is the octopus doing anything? Like, do I see other tentacles springing out of the water, or can I tell that something uh, has, has swum away based on the ripples? Give, give me a perception check. Eleven. Uh, uh, yes, you you can tell that it is kind of moving away. Do re- okay. do octopi have more than one tentacle? Do do we have any idea? <laughs> uh, none of you would know how to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly don't know. We saw this monster; it had a huge tentacle, uh, mm-hmm. and then it w- went away. It was a huge tentacle. Yeah, it was a, a monopus. Tell Rector tells us to yeah, mono monopus. Yeah, monopus, monopus. <laughs> It tries to swim that's and it just, just goes around in just circles. A, that's just a cat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so Regdar, how are you doing health wise? Uh, you know, I I mean, eight damage is a lot for Regdar, but I'm not I am not at what you would call bloodied. Um, but you know, probably can somebody do something for me before we go and get into more trouble? Kashka, do you have more healing to burn, or do I? You probably I- do got a fair amount uh i could also i could spend a hit die the next if we could take well i don't know if people we want don't to know sit around for an hour it. yeah yeah how how I mean, down are you uh regdar i am at 20 out of i believe 27 oh wow that's not bad no it's uh, not horrible i mean you know if what? i got hit three times like that, i mean i could i could just use a first level cure wounds if you want i could do yeah that as well. i'll leave it at your discretion Regnar is feeling uh, unu- uh, surprisingly unfazed by this whole situation. Presta, you feel- seem to have more attacks that are non-magical, so maybe it's better if I save slots as opposed yep. to you. I will. I will cast a uh, a first level cure wounds then. Seven. Well, that was an exciting start to the day. Indeed. Yeah. So, do we want to check out this uh, tunnel to the north, or do we want to head back to the? Somebody should put up city. a sign near this water. <laughs> Considering that Scott was not prepared for us to come into this chamber, I'm going to assume it's not extremely important. Uh, no, wow. Wow. you should not. That is not <laughs> what you should take away from Incorrect this. Incorrect assumption. Uh, not that I should metagame. I'm just saying mm-hmm. this adventure that we're playing has many decisions that you could make, and I always think that you are going to make one decision and you make another decision. So I me <laughs> not being ready. Be able to start predicting it then. Well, let's go down just, that northern tunnel then, since we bothered to yeah. break up the lock and fight a tentacle already. And agreed. Northern but maybe tunnel. maybe uh, the skiff is not the best means of egress from <laughs> this particular lost city. Uh, while everybody's tentacle. debating, I'm taking out the journal and making notes about the tentacle in, in the lake. <laughs> oh, good idea. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been utilizing From this day forward, journal. this shall be known as the day of the tentacle. Oh, so it shall. Mm-hmm. Is the tunnel to the north a, uh, worked what, what stone, or is it similar to the, the rough tunnel we just came it through? It is worked stone. Actually, let me double check that. So while you're here, you notice that tunnel has a 15-foot high ceiling. Uh, the doors are very similar to... You'll come across a door. They're, they are the exact same doors as the doors uh, that you have encountered before. Uh, there are, so you, you know that, uh, previously when you were in the, the, uh, the, the howling wind, uh, section, uh, that there was kind of general light illumination here, uh, the tunnels look different and they have bronze wall sconces that have continual flame spells on them. Uh, and so... Hmm. It is it is flickering around, uh, and that is what you notice. So you walk up this tunnel, which 
looks like uh, a worked tunnel, and to your left is a door. I listen at the door. All right, roll. 17. You hear kind of the clink of uh, somebody kind of walking around in there. You're not sure. I hear what somebody. Doing, but somebody's in there. I'm I back away from the door to let somebody else door. open it. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost trying to quietly open the door. Critical 20. <laughs> it is uh, the quietest door opening you have never heard. <laughs> So you open the door a little bit, uh, you peer in, and you see uh, five bugbears. Oh. Hmm. Huh. Are they making sandwiches? They are armed. Uh, no relation. Look like they are ready. They have not seen Umlal, but they look like they are kind of ready for a fight. Close the door, Umlal. Actually, okay. you only you only see four uh, bugbears. Um, well, were they the wearing... fifth one is behind you. <laughs> ah, and uh, I will say the ceiling of this chamber is 20 feet high, and a 10-foot high loft covers the west half of the room. Piles of crumbling brick in the middle of the floor mark spots where ovens once stood. Mm. Filthy, flea-infested straw pallets are arranged on the floor this alongside a water barrel and cask of provisions. This is um, well, tries to the mime. oven is out of commission. Amal um, tries to mime bugbear to the rest of the party, but it's hard because, like, it looks like a lot of other things. He's just dancing <laughs> around. Yeah. There's Kachka is your favorite bear? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Two words. Two words. Bug. One word. Bug. <laughs> bear. <laughs> Got it. So there's three mimics in there. <laughs> yes, but they're in the form of bugbears. Amal, <laughs> um, what if everything you ever fought was a mimic just pretending to be something else? jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, all right, I'll try to close the door quietly again. All right, roll. Oh my god, I gotta roll to close it quietly too. That was critical success. Well, well yeah, for opening. 17. I assumed I was perfectly good at it now. Uh, you close it, and they do not appear to notice. Okay, five, four, four. Bug Should bears. move away from the door before we start. Sorry, whispering. sorry, sorry. Measy four bugbears. Were they guarding something like a prisoner? Guarding loft. <laughs> Could you see up True. into the loft? I didn't see anything, right, Scott? Nope. Hmm. Nope. Do we nope. want to just kill some bugbears and find out oh, what's in that loft? Always. I'm ready to kick down that door and kill some bugbears. I mean, we could probably get a surprise round on them. Hell yeah. We haven't killed anything in a long time. I'm getting antsy. Uh, yeah, it's like, I'm bored. How does, I mean, are, in Dark Sun, are bugbears inherently evil? Like, <laughs> all right, now is not the time to trip. Or, you know, okay, we can, we will attack <laughs> Philosophically them. Philosophically speaking. We'll knock them out and tie them up and sure, interrogate I'll, them for information. Uh, knock them out with my storm of daggers. Yep, I'll totally <laughs> knock them out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yep. accidents happen. <laughs> Athos is a tough place, you know. I accidentally killed four bugbears. <laughs> Ah, yeah. uh, the classic Omlaw legal defense. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident. They ran into me, um, me weapons. My I, sword I'm out. I trying to cut sandwich with sword. <laughs> uh, well, let me um, know what you want. All right, you know what? I uh, Regdar has no compunctions about. R Regdar is full of. Uh, you know, he, he just that that octopus situation has real shook him up. If you guys want to murder a bunch of bugbears, Regdar has nothing to say. Other than have at. Well, Regdar will ready a spell to help out. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, Regdar casts mage armor on himself. And, uh, you know. Are we really going to fight these dudes for no reason? Well, I mean, we, we, should, we can try talking to them and see if they'll stand down. But it's a, like a loft and some straw. That sounds exciting. <laughs> well, why would there be five uh, or four bugbears, you know, itching for a fight if they're not guarding something well that's their room that's where they're they're kept when they're not fighting things but then why are they ready like... for a fight i don't understand surprise we're room inspectors die <laughs> why are we ready for a fight that's, that's, that's a good question <laughs> so that's what bugbears do guys are we the heroes of the adventure what if these no, bugbears are no. just what if these Scott's, bugbears are on their own epic quest? And Scott's, we're... Scott's running a party in a different tab that's just playing four bugbears. <laughs> yeah, <true>. They're <laughs> really they're great. They're excited about this room that they have. <laughs> they have plans. It's great. Fleas. Perfect number oh, of fleas. Man. 
Jerry, if we could just we could just get like a little bit of gold off this score, and I can go back to college, you can open that that brewery that you've always talked about. This could be our chance. That's right. I One can't last believe job. you right. wouldn't for think the record, that a, a... I'm not pro just starting random <laughs> fights when we're actually looking it's for a specific Dungeons goal. And Dragon. <laughs> That's I, right you know. point. No, all right. Uh, whatever you guys want to do, but almost got to score it out, and is like someone should tell him what to do. Cause... Kachka, since there's really only two options. Uh, we can either start a random fight or start a random conversation. Would you like to start a random conversation with these bugbears? I mean, can't we just continue down the tunnel, or does it end here? It does not end. I, I, I am, think so. as you are arguing, I am furiously attempting to draw this map. So <laughs> continue <laughs> arguing. Buy him some more time. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go well, get a sandwich. I'll be right back. <laughs> Good time to do Smurgles that. Sandwich oh, Shop. Use, Find out more <laughs> at kankmilk.com, which will now redirect you to a Glass Angel. At least she's not getting a bagel. That's when she's really dismissive. Thanks, true you. believers. <laughs> this campaign is a two bagler. Reference acknowledged. It seems like we maybe shouldn't pick a fight with them, but then no, they may be guarding something, right? Also, or I oh, mean, also. I, I thought just go on past them. And... That seems. Perhaps not the best idea, but I don't know. Kachka could talk to them and then, you know, Kachka, you're like, you're part bug bear, right? <laughs> uh, part. Yeah. The first syllable of me is yeah. sort of related. Good map. First syllable huh. of them. Well, that's, that's a furiously drawn map right there. <sighs> I'm worried if we you know go what? down the hallway, Scott? then the bugbears are going to come behind us and you know attack what? us. Maps are hard, guys. That's right. I have I have a version of this map that is a digital map. It's perfect, uh, but I did not prepare it. So hey, you get what I'm drawing. <laughs> these are the choices. These are the repercussions of the choices you've made, people. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't allow us to get away with this lengthy this debate about whether to open the door or not without those bugbears just murdering all of us. <laughs> I am a kind man. Plus, I needed, uh, I needed to draw these things. So yeah, you're, let's Scott. You're a busy man. I am a busy man. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, I'm worried I'm, if we go to. So I'm worried if we go down the hall, the bugbears are going to come behind us and attack us. They're going to hear the commotion, and because there's going to be commotion, I know us at this point. And so I, I think that I mean we don't have to kill them, but I do think that. We should deal with them in some way, whether it's tying them up or convincing them that they should pursue that dream of opening a brewery and going to college. Like, whatever we need to do, I think something needs to happen with the bugbears. Also, we're we're far enough away from the city that whatever we do here probably won't cause a big enough commotion to, you know, pull in a ton of, of guards and stuff. And well, we might we be able to interrogate it's... these guys and find out some information about what's going on. Do we want to yeah, send cause... someone a little further down the hall first to make sure there's no, like, like 40 more bugbears at the end of the hall who are going to come running? I'll go. I'm sneaky. I'll go. Okay. Quietly. Quietly. Yeah, that's a 12. Uh, so you are going down the hallway, yes? To the north? Yes. Okay. Yep. Walk uh, down the hall. So you... you quietly creep up the hallway to the north uh, and your self check was a 12 you said? Yes. Alrighty. Alright, so as you, you turn the corner, as you can see here, you see see down that corridor about uh, 20 feet down that corridor and on the left is a uh, door that is currently closed and you hear uh actually you don't hear anything but what your your uh uh compatriots notice uh is that the door opens and angry bugbears are now spilling out of the room uh because shara you look over your shoulder and you notice an arrow slit is uh in that western wall and uh now you've got a bunch of angry bugbears Attacking. So let's roll for initiative. So that solved that problem. <laughs> Today is going to be the day the bugbears look through the slit at you in the western wall. I don't believe there's anybody who can be stealthy like Omal does. <laughs> On the map, there's a hint of a bugbear. Uh, it, 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 these tokens are not bugbears because, once again, I did not uh, expect this to happen. <laughs> hint of a bugbear tonight on the Lifetime Television Network. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, Kachka, 
you see the door is opening and part of a bugbear is coming out. I'm not going to tell which, you which, which part. part. Which part? Which part? <laughs> <laughs> Use your imagination. Well, thank God it's not coming out the arrow slit is all I have to say. <laughs> oh. Steve, you, you get to imagine which part of a bugbear you see. I think it's his big toe. Oh. Uh, there you go. What are you doing? Um, so it seems, uh, well, we're in initiative order, so I'm going to assume he has some ill will towards us. You could always, uh, defuse the situation. That seems dumb. Everybody's <laughs> itching for a fight. And now they've started it, so, uh, I'm gonna write it. Maybe, maybe they want to buy this book of Halfling Genealogy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I just seeing, like, a, a piece of a bugbear here? Can I see into that room that they're in at all? Uh, or, so the door is kind of open. You can see a little bit into the room, and they do have cover. Okay, so theoretically, I could drop a spell somewhere in that room at a point that I can see. Uh, where are you, Kachka? So you can, you can only see a very... From where you're standing, you can probably see more of the bugbear than the room. Bugbears are pretty... Can I see any unique. part of the room? You could see uh, the part where this bugbear is standing, pretty much. All right. So uh, I would like to drop a shatter spell right behind him. That's only got a 10-foot radius. You can't see behind him. Uh, okay. You can see his square. I could. Okay, well, <laughs> the far corner of his square, is that within 10 feet of my party members? Uh, his square, yes. <laughs> All right, that's How not going to That's not going to work, then. These squares are five feet. These are but five feet he okay. is uh this door remember it pivots on a central point so you could you're seeing uh into it and just kind of see the bugbear so you can cast it on where he's standing uh all but right. you don't well, see anything spell's else spell's not going to cut it then so all i'm going to do is i am going to send some vicious mockery his way all right nice body part i say <laughs> and uh the way vicious mockery works I unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments. If the target can hear me, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. It um, need not understand me. It can just tell from my tone of voice. That you mean business. Well, it can hear you. And bugbears are renowned for their wisdom. It fails. All right. So, he takes 2d4 of damage. <laughs> which is a two all right but he also uh, that's psychic damage if that makes any difference but he also has uh, disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn okay uh, he's rattled me... by my vicious mockery let me uh denote this on his token somehow uh we'll put this snail on here to remind me of that okay, ah, not yeah. that <laughs> he's not dead all right, That's anything else? Action, so I will also use a... Da, 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 da. We don't have bonus actions in this, do we? we have... You might have a bonus action. Well, you it might. is bonus actions, okay. So um, I forget which edition we're playing. Uh, so I will utilize a New bonus edition. action to give Bardic Inspiration to... The Bugbears! Standing right in front of me? Carlos is standing in front of you. Yep. I will... I will uh, I will give some inspiration to Carlos, which he can use on a to-hit check if he likes. Excellent. And oddly enough, Carlos is next. Oh, nice. So How great is that? So this guy is, is right in front of me. Are, are we like pretending that we're each filling one square here, even though we're kind of very small? Yes, we all are right. all pretending that. All right, can... good. Then I am going to uh, I'm gonna hit him nice. with my hammer, and I get to do that twice because I have the double... Uh, the, the double hit level five magic thing that I do. So, all right. Recall, you can choose to use that uh, inspiration after you make the roll. So, uh, all right. It's a, there. Uh, that's a 15 versus AC. What do you think, Kachka? Should I be inspired now? It's up to you. I don't know how heavily armored these bugbears are. 15 seems a little low to me. Yeah, I'm going to use my inspiration. That's a 1d8. Ooh. You can see that they're wearing hide armor. Mm. Well, how can we see it then? So 19 <laughs> versus AC. <laughs> Please leave. Uh, that hits. All right, nine damage. All right. 
And again, 19 versus AC. That hits that's as going well. to hit again, and that's 12 damage. Excellent. This bugbear is still alive. Looks like that bugbear is crying in his picture. <laughs> well, bugbears are sad. Well, he just saw uh, Shrek too, and he's feeling really emotional right now, okay? <laughs> uh, Ublal. Um, is that so? I was listening at the door. Is it possible Presta and I are yeah, positioned? Yeah, I would yes, have probably was, been farther away. I was just Perfect. flipping people around. Um, can I get a shot off on this guy? Can I hit him with my sword through this door? Uh, yes, he has, uh, from you, he has full cover, but you can He has full, full cover? He's in a door. You are reaching around a door that is partially open to tr- poke a sto- sword at I mean, him. It's not, it's not totally closed, so... <laughs> seems... PL, you also have full cover, unless you don't want to. <laughs> uh... I, I will try to hit him with my great sword a couple times. So what is that bonus to him? Five? You don't need to know that, but it is, in fact... Alexa wanted to know, apparently. <laughs> Alexa, Five. shut up. Five. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Did she just uh, say suck it? Yeah, probably. She's got... <laughs> that was a critical, my friend. All right. Uh, He's dead. <laughs> that, that was 24 damage. That um, bugbear is a former bugbear. So, is there another bugbear in there? You don't like, know. Two. Okay, well... Uh... well you, he did see. There were like four. Yeah, we know there's yeah. at least three in there. Amla, right. open the door! <laughs> see if there's more. Says, says Regdar. Uh, I think I'll go in, if I can. Can I step into this bugbear's space? Yes. We will remove the dead bugbear. Can... My next question being... So, you can break up certain things with a move... But I assume I can't break up my... Can I break up the extra attack action? Does that work? Uh, no, n- unless you have a special thing that lets you do that. Gotcha. Bummer. So you see four okay. bugbears. <laughs> I thought uh, you allowed that before. Okay. Um, in that case, you know what? Uh, that makes me angry. Oh, no. <laughs> you would, some of you would like me when I'm angry. Uh, so I think I will use the, I think it's just a bonus action to go into my rage. So I'll just do that. I'll start raging. Have All right. Uh, Presta. All right. Um, the door is open. Yeah. And I see there's nobody that's directly in the door. So do I have a there's shot at like that guy? Uh, or well, I will one? say if you, from where you are, you would have a shot at the northern guy, but he will have partial cover, which is he gets if I were to two. move to or here, half cover, I suppose is what they call it. If now. I were to move to just north of Carlos there, would I have uh-huh. a clear shot at the guy in the south side of the room? Uh, well, so remember the doors pivot. Yeah. I'm trying to remember so like with the door. Yeah. In halfway. there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then I will just take a, a shot at this guy. Who, okay. Who has cover. Uh, Right, that is an 18 guys. to hit. An 18... do, I, do I take a penalty for cover? No. Or does he get? He gets. He gets a plus, oh, and so uh, your arrow hits the door. All right. And clatters away. I will try again. That is a 25. A 25 will hit. Okay. Has anybody damaged this fellow yet? Uh, none of these no. fellows have been damaged yet. Okay. In that case, it is only a uh, only ten, ten points of piercing damage. All right. That is it for my turn. I think I will stay where I am. And now it is the bug bur- bug birds bug bears <laughs> turn. Ooh, bug bird. scary. <laughs> uh, and I will finish labeling them, and then they will unleash stuff. Uh, so bug bear. Unleash the stuff. <laughs> Bug, uh, well, they don't actually, so there's an arrow slit, but they don't have, uh, bows, uh, which seems like a short-sighted thing like, on the bugbear's point. arrows through the slits, like... Uh, they have javelins, which I don't think will really fit through the slits. So, they are going to take their slits. morning stars and attack the one person that they see. <laughs> and they will yell out, DEATH TO THE HOWLING HATRED CULT! Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we are wearing. Are we wearing initiate robes? Yes, yep. we are. <laughs> That's a bad move. Oh, yeah. part. Uh, I wonder as... they had that locked off. 
And Sorry, we will... killed your friend. Oh. <laughs> uh, so what does a sixteen hit Umlo? Mm, my armor class is sixteen. So a sixteen will hit. So two of them hit you with their morning stars, and uh, I just need to find enough dice. Are they speaking common when they say this? They are. Okay. Bugbears are intelligent. Hmm. <laughs> well, they they can speak. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily wow. mean they speak common. Uh, they can speak common. Uh, and you take fourteen. Uh, twenty points of damage. Well, I am raging, are. so I resist damage. So Pummeling you. Ten points of damage. And they are they are very loudly saying, ah, the "Howling hatred called." <laughs> That's our name. Don't wear it out. Uh, they've all gone. So now it is Shara's turn. Okay. Um. I need to move to be able to do anything, but there's like this row of people. Um, three, four, five, six. Um, all right, I'm gonna move around and back here, and I'm gonna take aim with my crossbow at um the dude directly in front of me. Okay. And since the door is like open, he shouldn't have any kind of cover, uh... right? He does not. Okay. All right. Um, so, oops, I scrolled the wrong thing. All right. That's 19 to hit. Uh, 19 will hit. Okay. That's something. Um, and also, ooh, sneak attack. Sneak attack because Omlal is right next to it. I get an extra 3d6. So... 6, 12, 13, uh, 14 damage. Piercing damage. He is still alive. He has uh, some, some bolts sticking out of him. You did that's say crossbow. That's very sad. Oh. Fire. I did bad. say crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> Ragdar. And that's, that's my turn. Well, uh, I have a variety of things I could do, but they would probably include Omwal. So, uh, though, actually, Omwal, you're resisting damage right now, right? Um, as long as it's not psychic, it would not be psychic. Um, I'm not immune. I'm just resisting. <laughs> just eh. so we're clear. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. Um, <laughs> why not? I've been rescued from a uh, um, from an octopus today. Uh, I'm gonna class a uh, cloud of daggers. Um. I, it, I'm going to cast it on the uh, bugbear kind of in front of Omlal. Um, so Omlal, there is a 5x5 five five square or cube uh, full of spinning daggers. Uh, creatures that enter or start that turn in that cube will take 4d4 slashing damage. 5 so, feet by 5 feet? 5 feet by 5 feet. Okay, by so it's only one square, so it's not on no, me. No. I would have cast it right in the doorway, uh, ah. but yeah. Okay, where did you cast it? I I figure right on this guy. Okay. And uh, so he's in a whirling swarm of daggers? Yeah, and I don't know if anyone has any ability to knock other guys into that storm of daggers. Go for it. And so does he take damage, or does that happen next uh, turn? I guess when he starts his turn, he will okay. take 44 damage. Well, so. you, you, you remember that. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Creature in these spell descriptions implies that it takes in our characters as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's creatures versus enemies. Yeah, exactly. So don't don't go into that square, other people. Uh, Ketchka. Which square am I not supposed to go into? That oh, one. that that one, yeah. the one with the daggers. <laughs> uh, okay. Hmm. I don't know if I want to continue the killing necessarily because these guys seem like they could be on our side. So yeah, yeah, we may be we may be undermining our whole. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to not attack this round. I'm gonna yell out, "Wait, wait!" 
We're on your side. We hate... I'm going to take off my hood if I'm wearing it. Say, wait, we, we also want death on the Howling Hatred clan. These are disguises. We're on your side. Please, let's, uh, let's stop the fighting and direct it towards our real enemy. Is this cloud of daggers I'm in also a disguise? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, mistakes were made. <laughs> you may wish to step one square to your west. 